chances like Bitcoin honestly come once in a lifetime. Whatever age I want to retire at, Bitcoin's going to be my retirement. Young people listen to their parents and parents are stuck in their old ways and their old financial system. I work every single day and it's so important to preserve your energy and save it in something that's going to keep the same value or even more value over time. You go to school, you pass your GCSEs, you do your A-levels, you go to university, get a job, get a mortgage, have a family, live your life and die. Bitcoin was designed as a financial system to help people. It's not there to come for you or attack you. It's only there to help you. And it's your choice as a person whether you use that or not. If you look at a current fiat system, oh my God, it's literally controlled by the government. And that's why it's so corrupt because they can do whatever they like with it. They're like dangling a bit of string and we're chasing after their dream. Even if the whole internet in the world shut down and someone's going to power it up the next day, Bitcoin is still there. You know, your energy is still preserved. There's no way in chance that I'm ever going to buy a house. I don't want to like risk my freedom for a mortgage. I have to pay off for the rest of my life till like I'm 80. That 10% is going to be your retirement. So from the beginning, I've always looked at Bitcoin as a source of retirement. If you're ever going to dream of anything is to always be healthy. Hi, Amelia. How are you doing? Everything fine on your end? Hello, Robin. Thank you for having me on your podcast. It's all really good. I can't wait to speak about Bitcoin. And also congratulations to you and on your podcast because 365 days is crazy. And there's only a limited amount of people currently in the world that are actually fully into Bitcoin. And you only really see that when you go to Bitcoin conferences. So the fact that you've got a guest for each one is just, yeah, really cool. So congratulations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. It, it's so much. Uh, it's so cool because like the, the community is actually, it's a really small community, but I guess yeah. it's it's bigger than I thought because the, the biggest problem that I thought that I have with the podcast is getting so many guests on my show because I was like, I have so many interesting people to talk to uh, that I can fill every day a guest. And turns out, yeah, there, there are a lot of people and I have a long, long list that I have to work <laughs> towards and then people yeah. want to be a second time on. So like, and there are new people joining every day to Bitcoin. So I guess the, I, I guess I can never interview everyone. I, that, that's my yeah. conclusion. So like, there's always someone to interview uh, and uh, the, the, the community is just really, really big. How long are you in the community? Uh, so I got into Bitcoin through my family in around 2017. I actually heard about it. I didn't get into it fully just because at the beginning, it's always very rough, isn't it? So I fully started investing and educating myself in Bitcoin around 2020, I would say the year or oh, 2019, one of the two. It's when I left university. That's when I really I dropped out of university. Sorry. That's when I decided to really dive into Bitcoin. You are now 21. So uh, 2019, this is five years ago. So this was like yeah. when you're 15. Yeah, 15, 16. So, oh wait, no, really? Five years ago? Mm, maybe. <laughs> yeah, literally. Well, 2017, we started like in my house, we started to educate ourselves financially. 2000 and... Oh no, then it was like later, sorry, then 2022 then maybe, I think I left uni. No, 2021, I'm so confused with the dates. It doesn't matter. At like 16 years old, I started to like learn about Bitcoin, learn about the financial system. And then I was 18 years old when I joined university. Yes, I was 18. And then same year I dropped out of university that I joined. So yeah, I was 18 years old. So I'm now 21. So yeah, from that point, I just fully dived in and educated myself about Bitcoin the most that I, that I could. So what was yeah. Bitcoin a, a reason why you dropped out of school? Yes, a massive reason. Yeah, I think because once you adapt to a new financial system, a new way of thinking, it's so hard to resist that and you just can't. So going forward, Bitcoin had a massive influence on the next steps. Even now in my life, Bitcoin has a massive influence. Like everything that I kind of do is always surrounded by Bitcoin, but just because Bitcoin has such a massive, it is, it's had a massive impact on my life so far and it will have in the future as well. 
like the same as money does for a lot of people in the world bitcoin is that is that to me now if that makes sense so yeah it had a massive impact on the reason why i left uni um and it all just came down to simple maths you know one day i sat down with my parents and i was like i'm going to uni i'm not going to get anywhere in what four three years time it's not going to get me anywhere i'm going to be in so much debt i'm going to have no assets i'm going to have no savings i'm going to have no money <laughs> and then i'm literally going to be nowhere and you know don't get me wrong there's a lot if i went into maybe because i studied graphic communication design and maybe if i decided to do maybe like a doctor or like a specialist within the doctor area or like a lawyer then okay stay in university that would be the perfect but i didn't have the passion for that i didn't even have the passion to do graphic design i just think what we get taught in schools it just it stays with you you know if you do like what so many years in school you adapt a way of thinking we're all kind of like sheep so at the time a lot of the friends i had and the people i surrounded myself with day to day had a massive impact on my choices but thanks to my family that kind of and thanks to bitcoin to be honest and the fact that me and my family educated ourselves that changed my views on everything and just like i said i just sat down with my family and i did simple maths on where my life will be in the next 3 to 4 years time if i continue with the you know the system that i was going with and not the bitcoin system and then i compared my life what it will be like in the next 4 years time if i continue investing into bitcoin and to be honest i think i made the right decision because you know like i said i would have had no assets no money no experience no job really because it's hard i would probably not even like graphic design at the end of there it would just be Yeah, you know, I didn't have a passion for it at the beginning, yet a lot to, yet alone towards the end and Bitcoin just changed my perspective completely and now my outcome in my life is completely different as well. So, yeah. <laughs> I I, I totally get that especially for something like graphic designs or even yeah. coding or anything like you, you can learn this yourself like and you exactly. can show it. Like you can yeah. learn it yourself, make some projects, and you can actually show people what you can do. Um, yeah. That might be <laughs> harder when you want to be a doctor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that you you you, you have, kind of have to to show them, but uh, a degree probably helps there. But for things like graphic designs or marketing or economics in general, uh, all all those areas, it's like why go like massively in depth? How much depth would you have accumulated uh, if you would have done the whole university? Do you know that well, number? Yeah, um I wouldn't know exactly because I dropped out so quickly. It's crazy. I think I only did like 2 months and I was done, you know? Like I knew within the 2 months straight away just because I I lived just outside of London, so and my university was in actually like a little bit central towards the top, like north of London. So the traveling and I'm at the south bit, so traveling every day was crazy. um so yeah i only did 2 months of that and i did a foundation year which is so i'm so blessed that i did that i'm so happy i made that choice because i started with a foundation to even see if i liked to uni and the course i decided to do and out of the 2 months i dropped out straight away but to answer your question like adding that on top plus 3 years and then plus who knows if i did an honors after as well um maybe like around 100,000 so a lot of money because the uni i got into was like known to be one of like the second in the world like out of creativity and like first in europe or something like that so yeah yeah the charges was crazy but like that's the degree then you have to add the actually living expenses to travel there then actually maybe within the 3 or 4 years like i would have ended up living there so is everything on top of that plus actually feeding myself going places buying like i don't know a piece of clothing or i don't know whatever will happen you know so you have to pay for everything really and you know i can't live off of my parents and it's not really like the values that i got taught in my household anyway like from the age of 16 when i started working i from that point i've bought everything myself and i never fed off of my parents whereas a lot of people that go to uni 
feed off of their parents and yeah I wouldn't want to be in that situation so yeah it was a lot of money and you know I don't come from a rich background so I yeah no definitely not <laughs> so you were self-sustaining from age 16 years old yeah in the sense like in my household we the value that we always got taught is to work hard I think it's because my my dad my mom we didn't come from rich backgrounds like we immigrated to England when I was around two years old so everything that they've kind of built they've made me and my brother appreciate it so therefore when I was around 16 years old that was the age in England when you were allowed to go and actually work so therefore I decided to go and get a job and then everything that I kind of earned I would you know, buy everything that I needed myself. I would never go out of my way to ask my parents. Obviously, if it was like a necessity, like something small, like they were doing or, you know, something silly, then it would be fine. But like, I would never go out of my way to be like, oh, can you buy me clothes? Oh, can you get me this car? Or like, whatever it was, you know, I would never do that. And yeah, and I think that's a really good value as well, because you can't get in, like, you can't get anywhere in life you know feeding off your parents or whatever you gotta like actually be independent as well because I think then life teaches you a lot of values so yeah that was really important and I'm so glad because I have friends now where they haven't worked a day in their life and you know they don't know the value of money and like I don't mean money in the sense of our fiat but like even just bitcoin you know the value of you know spend dedicating your time to get terrible money in return to then put it into Bitcoin. But yeah, people don't even know the value of that. So what I was thinking with the student loan uh, is like, if, if you actually get something like that, you should rather put it in, in Bitcoin and work your ass off to pay yeah. it back in the next like five years. It's probably a better investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. I actually had a friend who, um, he took a loan all the loans he received from university he actually put them in like well terrible decision he could have put it into bitcoin like he said but instead he put it into like shit coins and <laughs> it was terrible <laughs> and i just think what are you doing so yeah god knows how that turned out but yeah but yeah that's the best outcome i think <laughs> it's interesting how many of our generation uh gen c i think uh, is it called yeah. uh are into shit coins it's it's like yeah when i see my audience i have literally and i've talked about that a lot in my podcast already i have three or four times more people above 65 than under 25 and i myself 25 so that's yeah. uh that's that's huge that there are not a lot of young people uh watching bitcoin only content they watch crypto content they watch exactly. like this meme coin tokens yeah uh, it's really interesting how, how do you look at it and maybe do you have some stories for like friends or something like that that <laughs> got into uh, meme coins and altcoins well to be honest with you I think my perspective on that is why people do that because I think people are so stuck in the system we live in and because of inflation how everything goes up I think people's goal is always to quickly make money and I don't know live the life or spend it on whatever they want to spend and I think the fact that people want to chase after money so quickly I think that's why people get into shit coins not actually taken into consideration of what the out outcome could actually be you know when you spend anyone who spent hours actually revising bitcoin they would never go into shit coins but to your story part a lot of um my brother <laughs> to be honest myself when i first started into bitcoin i put like it was only a hundred pounds. I remember I put into a governance token. My uncle was like, put it into this token. It will grow. Like it will be so good, you know, thinking I'm going to double or something. And I did it and I lost everything. And then at second point, I put like a thousand pounds into another token. I've got like 200 now. It's crazy. And, you know, every time I've done it, like with Bitcoin, it hasn't happened. But with Bitcoin is a different story because like when you learn the properties of Bitcoin, it's completely different. And the same with everyone, but like people have to learn you know you have got to put into shit coins to then know what the actual value is and then actually put into bitcoin to actually know but i've never had i don't the problem is is i don't really have a lot of friends that are actually into bitcoin like the only time i ever meet people is if i go to conferences and communicate but like on a day-to-day -day basis it's so hard like even if i mention bitcoin people get like they take it as an attack so it's so hard for me to answer that question because yeah, people, <laughs> I 
I don't really have like a lot of people and I wish I did because it's like such a massive part of my life so I wish I had more people to talk to Bitcoin about so yeah I haven't experienced that yet which is I guess good I've only experienced that like with my family and then me and myself so yeah make Bitcoin friends. It's a, it's a cheat code to life. Uh, it's like make as many Bitcoin connections as, as you possibly can. And I, I guess you already <laughs> do that, but also for the, for the audience, I was so long, I was three years, uh, before, uh, I was three years in Bitcoin. I was two years Bitcoin only 100% in Bitcoin yeah. and I never met another single person that, that did the same thing in real yeah. life and it was not even uh going uh on on twitter and asking uh, and and going about like hey what are you doing with bitcoin or something like that like i was completely alone with my bitcoin stands yeah and exactly. this is not good like go go out there and 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 on meet online people and meet in real life people that actually believe in that crazy bitcoin thing because otherwise you you will think at some point that you are actually crazy even though yeah, you're not exactly <laughs> no and i always think that when i like mention bitcoin to anyone as well like i always think i'm the crazy one when realistically they're the crazy one because they're the one that are stuck in their own ways you know and it's just so hard i think the difference is, is people aren't open-minded and it makes it so hard to just even talk or mention bitcoin or you know or if you do they relate it back to shit coins and it's like no 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 no. bitcoin for me is a completely separate topic than shit coins you know but even like you say that even when i went to conferences with bitcoin conferences a lot of people are still into shit coins like it's so hard to meet maxi these days that I've realized like because I'm like fully Bitcoin nothing else now you know and it's so hard to meet people that are like the same you know especially in real life like you said you know so yeah it's very difficult why do you think uh it's it's so hard um for for people to understand and grasp Bitcoin like what's what's the hold up I mean even like in the last few years we have so much great Bitcoin only content this was way different five six years ago but now it's like there's no excuse you can learn in about bitcoin in like a week if you really dedicate yourself well i think people are lazy <laughs> just to put it simply like people are definitely lazy to even okay number one people are so stuck in their own ways like even when you mention the topic like when i mention it i mention it out of excitement and i would love to speak to someone about it but when i do mention it people take it as an attack like i'm attacking their life or their choices or their knowledge or whatever and it's so hard to carry on a conversation like that whereas when you meet a different group of people where you do mention it and they actually listen and they're open-minded then the conversation is completely different but i think you know people unfortunately our world is surrounded by the system we live in currently and the terrible money that we have currently so therefore people are so stuck in those ways and you know I don't care so much about the older generation but it's like the younger generation like people when you like I find it more interesting speaking to younger people just because it's like they're the future and I want to see their perspective on things but the problem is that is unfortunately young people listen to their parents and parents are stuck in their old ways and their old financial system so therefore unfortunately people like my parents have a massive influence on my life and I'm sure it's the same for you it's like for anyone really so you know when you kind of like get excited about something like as a young person when you hear it from like your friends or something and you relate it back to your parents and the parents don't agree I think that has a massive impact on the child as well or like the young adult so therefore i think it's harder and then obviously the second part is people are so lazy like they don't care to or they care when it's too late do you know what i mean like yes i, I think that's what it is it's laziness and people are not open-minded and they just don't want to learn and you know when you think about bitcoin in the beginning even when i started learning about bitcoin it was so hard and like complicated at the beginning like if it wasn't for my parents i probably wouldn't understand and i think people when they're young they're very immature and you know they don't care to learn about it and then when they do they're like oh i don't understand any of it you know so and then i don't really care about the older generation because they're going to die out soon anyway so it's like the young people are the future at the end of the day and the only positive thing is i think why there will be 
a massive adoption in the future is if you look at the young generation, everyone is so much into technology as well. So I think therefore Bitcoin is based on technology as well within itself. So I think that's a good hope for the young people as well. But one thing as well, have you realized like a lot of people struggle to watch like an hour video, young people, everyone just watches TikTok for like one minute and they're like, okay, next, you know? So I think the spam is very <laughs> different as well. You know, people don't want to watch like an hour's content or, you know, when was the last time you saw someone young reading a book? Like no one really does that these days. And, you know, it's it's all to the social media at the end of the day. And then also like the priorities change and, you know, everything changes as time goes on. So yeah, who knows what will happen, but hopefully more younger people adopt it and they start listening to Bitcoin as more instead of their parents. <laughs> So, it's, yeah. it's, so, it's, it's so interesting for me with the attention span because like two sides for me to do it like yes of course like they are on tiktok and they are, have no, no attention span but at the same time they concentrate on that tiktok feed for like an hour or two hours so in, yeah. in the end they kind of have a long attention span but at at shit yeah, like they, they have the, they, they have a really bad attention span in in the end of, of one thing they always want a new distraction exactly uh, and, th and that's, that's the way it was designed to do right like tiktok was designed for that you know so the same is with instagram people like watching other people's lives instead of focusing on their own lives and with tiktok i just think oh this is new oh this is new 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 and then you spend like an hour on it and you're like oh my god where has the time gone but nobody ever actually reflects that among themselves nobody thinks oh am i wasting my time what am i doing with my time like you know, instead of learning about Bitcoin, 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 or even like not even Bitcoin, let's put Bitcoin for the side, but financial system, financial system, how to make money or whatever, you know, people just prefer to watch other people's lives instead of focusing on their own. So yeah, that's bad. It definitely is. It's it's, it's interesting. For I asked in the beginning of my podcast, like the first like 10, 20 episodes a lot, like why Bitcoin? And after a while, it got really boring. <laughs> because yeah, it, uh, yeah because everyone I asked, says the same thing, I bet. Hey? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it repeats the, itself. Yeah. But at some points, I, I like to ask the question, uh, especially if there's someone with a unique perspective there. Uh, for example, yesterday was Tom Nelson in my podcast, who is kind of getting orange pilled now, but he's yeah. actually just about the climate topic. And I really want to get to uh, got that covered in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, he, he, I asked him and I also want to ask you because, uh, you are so much more younger than most of my guests. You are in my age range. You're like four or five years younger than me. Uh, yeah. and it's, it's, it's like most of my guests are like 10, 20, 30 years older than me. Sometimes even yeah. older than I, I had them. My oldest guest was 76. He was literally 51 years older than me. Um, wow. So that's why I wanted to ask you, why is it for you and for your generation, uh, Bitcoin so important? Like why should, especially as you said, you care about your generation and not so much about the older generation? Why is it for the younger generation so important that they care about Bitcoin? I mean, for me, Bitcoin is so important because I have such a simple perspective when it comes to Bitcoin. I just look, look it's been the best performing asset and at the end of the day, Bitcoin debases our current financial system. Simple. And that's why it's so important to me. And with my life as well, I just, you know, I don't come from a rich background. So it's so important. Like I work every single day and it's so important to preserve your energy and save it in something that's going to keep the same value or even more value over time. And that's why I think it's so important for the younger generation, because if you look at the older generation, they all have houses, you know, they're in mortgages, you know, they have, they've lived more of their life, you know, and don't get me wrong, anyone can go into Bitcoin, because that's why it's there, it's for the people, Bitcoin's for the people, so that's super important, but with the younger generation, they're still learning, and they're still finding out new things, and unfortunately, whether we all like it or not, we all have to work in some way or shape or form you know we all have to feed ourselves and something so i think bitcoin's there to help our financial replace our financial system actually and you know by preserving your energy and putting it into bitcoin that's so important so the quicker young people learn this 
the better their future will be. And that's all it comes down to. Like my recipe for Bitcoin is so simple. Like I have to go to work. I have to, I'm not rich. My family's not rich. I have to work, but why work and waste my time and waste my energy? You know, nobody really loves going to work, you know, because you're still, you're fulfilling someone's dream at the end of the day. But what you do with the carrot that you get at the end is what's important, you know? And if you're not gonna focus on yourself and see that if you're gonna put your money into savings bank account, and that's gonna lose its value after 10 years time, then that's on you, you know? People don't care to learn and that's the issue. So that's why I think young people just need to realize that it's just so difficult, you know? Because as I said, like the more you mention it, the harder, it gets if you're not open-minded. I don't know, that really, I didn't really answer your question. <laughs> so, yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's really good. I, just uh, just quick, what are you actually uh, working? You mentioned it, uh, that you're working. Uh, take a guess. <laughs> what do I look like I work? <laughs> well, uh, g take a guess what are you working? Oh, I never did, I uh, never guessed someone's uh, occupation. Yeah, I, guess. Um, uh, I mean, I I'm only 21. So like, I'm only starting out and don't get me wrong, any job that I mm -hmm. kind of do, like, it's an experiment for me. And it's just, and remember, like, my only purpose of going to work is so I can accumulate Bitcoin, you know. <laughs> so what would That's you think? Interesting. Um, a, <laughs> a lot of, uh, I know a lot of young girls that actually do babysitting a lot uh, in, in yeah. their free time uh, when, when they do something, <laughs> but those are, those are usually uh, people that actually study and have time then in the evenings and uh, yeah. then it's good for studies. Um, I don't study. <laughs> I, you, don't, you don't study? That's, that's like, I have no clue. Uh, I mean, you, I study Bitcoin, but that's different, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's like uh, everyone studies, but not at university because without university, you actually learn. I just take a yeah. while to get, no, like that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, take it. Well, if you saw me on the street, you were walking past me and someone said, what do you think an occupation is? What would you take, I guess? <laughs> what guess would you take? Oh, man, I have no clue. <laughs> I'm quite I'm small thinking, in real life as well. I, I think of something. Oh, waitress, waitress. No. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, uh, I drive lorries, Arctic lorries. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> uh, like HGV, like, you know, the big lorries, like driving. Lorries. What is a lorry? You don't know what a lorry is. You know, I don't know how to uh, <laughs> say it. Is that a car uh, or? No, you know how you have a car, then you have a bus, you know? Uh, oh, you mean a uh, camping van, something like that. You know, bigger than a camping van. You know, the lorries that have deliveries on the back? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> really? Wait, you've got internet, right, currently? I got internet. Uh, yeah. And, and I will, wait, I will put that up now. Uh, you can you can look it up with me. Uh, yeah. I can. Maybe they say it differently in Austria. I'm not sure. We call I it mean, a lorry. They definitely do because we speak German. <laughs> But, oh, okay. But, there we go. Yeah. So, <laughs> definitely so then. May, may, maybe there is a. a um, L O R R Y. Uh, wait, L O R. R Y. Y. Uh, no, no, no. Like per double R and then a Y at the end. And then without the W. Y for Yankee. Oh. Yeah, that one, the top one. Truck. Oh. You know? Oh, truck. Maybe that's what it is. And then if you go on images, oh. maybe. No yeah. way. You, you drive a truck? <laughs> yeah. You drive a semi-truck? Uh, yeah, like the big one, the Arctic ones. I don't know how you say that in Germany, though. Something like that? Yeah, yeah, like that. Exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> that's called a lorry? Yeah, it's called lorry in English. I mean, that's what I call it. Or like a truck, you know, you can say I, as I, well. I know it with semi-truck. Is oh. that the same thing? Oh, let you show me. Uh... Semi-trailer truck. That's what uh, I know. Yeah, I could probably ride one of those as well. <laughs> yeah, they're quite, I think their deliveries are longer. I'm not sure actually, but yeah, how, big one, the big how, ones. How did you get to this? Wow. That, that's, well, I would never have guessed that. Like not in no, a million No, nobody years. ever. Everyone has like weird reactions. Like no way. And like when you see me in real life, I'm like small as well. And everyone always thinks like it's a men's job, you know? <laughs> so it's funny. Um, 
Well, I worked previously in a logistics company and the only reason why I went there was because I wanted to do my lorry license. I'm my very my perspective on life is try everything, you know. I'm not saying I'm going to drive lorries. Like I would love to have a helicopter license, a plane license, a lorry license, a drone license, whatever, you know. I want to do it all. You have to try everything in life, you know. And that's always been my perspective and I came into the logistics company hoping that I'll meet some sort of manager, which I did. And I asked him, I knew another company which did like a boot camp for driving. So I was like, hmm, I need to get into this boot camp, you know, and actually get my license because they do it for free for you if you get into it. And the only reason, the only way I knew I could get into it is if, um, what's it called, like the, I, someone recommends me, like a manager from a logistics company. So that's exactly what happened. And then they reach out to me and I was like, brilliant, let's begin this. And yeah, and then they did it all for free for me. So I was like, brilliant, you know, I earned more money, more into Bitcoin. <laughs> I was like, win, win, really. So yeah, and you have to try everything. So yeah, that's how I got into it. If you watch my podcast already for more than two times, you know how extremely passionate I am about self-custody. And the first very, very, very important step to self-custody is always getting yourself a hardware wallet. And I have one for you here. This is the Bitcoin only edition from the Bitbox, my favorite single signature hardware wallet on the market. Another really important piece of self-custody, if you have a hardware wallet, wallet is the backup of the seed phrase and Bitbox made the perfect solution to back up your seed phrase. They made a reusable steel wallet. Check out that beauty. It's durable and extremely heavy. If I put it on the desk, I seriously fear for my own table. It's so, so heavy and durable. I love it. This is where my seed phrase is secure. Go to bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your bitbox and if you use code robin you even get five percent off of your complete order and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self-custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step and if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty and last but not least i have something completely new for you guys i partnered up with coin vigilante this is the most beautiful bitcoin timepiece that i ever saw created by anyone look at that beauty i love it so much coin vigilante made a and perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. And Coin Vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing Genesis edition of their watch collections. You have the date of the first ever mined Bitcoin block in there. And of course, also the block height and which epoch we are currently in. I love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece. And make sure to check out those amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions. I love those watches so, so much. That is fascinating that you are doing that. Um, how, how long are you doing that now? And when did you do uh, the, your license? I started my license beginning of the year i had it since i think january march april may april around april so yeah around april i got my license and then like to transition obviously it took some time because no experience at the beginning which is also another hard thing like i it's so funny to me how like people want people to work but there's always that experience part that limits people <laughs> do you know what i mean and you got to start somewhere um so yeah i've been driving for like yeah, a month, two months now, roughly. So I'm very new to it. It's all beginning stages at the moment, but I had my license from like April, June-ish, somewhere around there. So yeah. 
I just imagine like being on a gas station, uh, <laughs> like the, there's like a big lorry, a big truck coming along, and then there's like this small, uh, <laughs> young small girl. blonde l l l l girl <laughs> standing outside. Yeah, exactly. Like, did, she, did she steal that from somewhere? <laughs> I do. I get so many weird reactions. Like, even when I'm driving, like I just see people looking, and then they just can't stop looking because I don't know why. Because like from my face, I look really young as well. Like my genetics are very. You know, I look young and then obviously I'm quite small as well. So like, and then this massive lorry and yeah, it's crazy. Even when I'm reversing, oh my God, another story. <laughs> it's crazy. So Do, yeah. The, did the police ever... <laughs> <laughs> turn you over to like do you have your license madam no but i actually i went to a company and i was just delivering something it was like more up north in england and they i come back the same day to like where i work like down the bottom and the lady in the office says to me um someone rang me from the company that i went to earlier and said is she allowed to drive she looks really young <laughs> So I was like, oh my God. So yeah, I always get it. It's crazy. I'm sure I'm going to get it more and more, you know, because when I'm going to be 40, I'm going to look like I'm 20. So it's crazy. Yeah. But it speaks uh, volumes to uh, your money mindset. It, I, I love that you are trying a lot of art because that's what I also did and I still do, honestly. Yeah. Um, with, with, but the, the time between 20 and 30 for me is a time to try everything and go high risk. Definitely. Uh, it's like m make a lot of, uh, connections, make a lot of skills, uh, and, and try a lot of experiences, like have, have a life that you really want to, uh, that, that you <laughs> live experiences, a lot of different ones. So you can actually um, uh, tell someone from something. You have to have some sort of interesting life. Uh, yeah. So, so th that's like the 20 to t uh, 30 area. After 30, maybe you can get a little bit more targeted, like a little bit more like in one direction. You should figure out a little bit more, but still after yeah. 30, you can make a lot of changes. Uh, but if you tried a lot between 20 and 30, you probably don't have to do a lot of changes with 30 because you tried 10 years different things and you know what you want and you you don't want so that's that's a that's a huge thing and uh, i love that you're already with like 20 uh, one so far that other people are not with never <laughs> so yeah someone that, said really to me cool. actually the other day they were like how old are you and i go 21 and he goes damn you've really experienced a lot already <laughs> and like to be honest like that was just the driving side and he doesn't even know half of the things you know just i'm not saying it's massive but i don't know in my perspective like you have to try everything you know because if you're gonna go through life asking what if what if and you never do it like imagine when you reach your deathbed and you'll be like oh my god like i, I, sh I wish i should have tried you know and I think one thing that always limits us as people is fear. I don't know if you've realized, like even doing this podcast today, I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, am I going to be good enough? Like I'm probably, my words are going to be terrible. You know, I'm going to like, um, what's the word? Um, mutter and yeah, yeah. I was just thinking crazy things and things like fear stop us from doing crazy things in life. And um, don't get me wrong, like you always have to be safe. You have to use your brain and think, but never stop trying. You know, you have to keep going. And that's why relating back to Bitcoin, you have to try, you know, you have to be open-minded, you know. So yeah, it's really good to try. And because then you're gonna not going to ask yourself, what if, what if, you know? So it's really it's, important. Uh, um, uh, th there's, there's those seasons of yes and seasons of no's. Uh, I, I like those fears. <laughs> like there are seasons in your life where you have to say almost yes, yes to almost everything and then, yeah. then the seasons of like when you figure out what you want to do then all of a sudden you have to say no so many times because you want to focus and don't want to have those distractions it's really interesting i went to a free season of yes like i think like two three years between like 20 and and, and 24 and now i'm kind of getting into a season of no where i really just yeah. want to do the podcast and do that exactly. every day and everything else is like no i don't have time to go out today <laughs> so, <all those laughs> yeah things. no that's good yeah, you have to set your time straight, don't you? And your priorities for us. I think at the moment I'm in the season of yeses. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, just really? get out of your comfort zone. That's so important, you know. Really, really cool. Um, one thing that I was wondering, um, you, you probably have a lot of peers uh, that, that are around you. How do they look at money and how do you look at money? And what's the difference there in, in your like the general 
uh, Generation C money mindset versus uh, what you have learned, especially also with Bitcoin? Oh my God, completely different. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very different. Uh, I'll give you like, I don't know in every other country, but like in the UK, it's very, go to school, you go to school, you pass your GCSEs, you do your A-levels, you go to university, get a job, get a mortgage, have a family, live your life and die. And then like with Bitcoin, it's completely different. Like it's changed my perspective completely like from dropping out of uni the people that I talk to communicate with the things I do to get out of my comfort zone is completely different whereas people are just so stuck and they just chase and chase constantly after money that's unfortunately not going to get them anywhere because of our broke financial system and I think that's the difference you know I even from a young age when I like in 2017 when I started learning about the financial system because that's what it begins with you know it doesn't just go straight into bitcoin like the excitement I had and I knew after reading I probably you probably get this a lot rich dad poor dad I'm sure you have that a lot yes yeah it's like a beginner's book for everyone but after reading that I was like oh my god there's like this completely different world and I'm here thinking in the old system and just the difference between assets, liability, good debt, bad debt, you know, you start thinking, you start using your brain. And then once you go down that rabbit hole, obviously that leads you to Bitcoin and all other assets, you know, but once you go down that rabbit hole, it's crazy. It changes your perspective completely. And at the beginning, when I was still going to school and I was learning about the financial system, I had this excitement and I would share that with other people. And to be honest, I got laughed at for like two months from my friends. Yeah, like just learning about the financial system and trying to share that with other people is really hard. So even just a small situation like that really showed me that actually people want to be stuck. You know, I used to feel sorry for people, but now I just don't completely. And I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but you know, I try to share what I know. And obviously there's still a lot that I don't know, but um, yeah, with people, it's very hard. You try to say one thing, they don't agree. They think Bitcoin's either a scam, the system they're living in is perfect, although they're in debt, you know, they're not living their good life, but they're never really open to a different perspective. So it's really hard to communicate with people. And, you know, just a small situation like getting laughed at really showed me that actually I should close my mouth and, <laughs> you know, get on with what's right for me. And it's really upsetting, actually, because when I, like I said earlier, when I do mention Bitcoin, I mention it out of good and like I get excited it's not a way to attack anyone and I also think Bitcoin was designed as a financial system to help people you know it's not there to come for you or attack you it's only there to help you and it's your choice as a person whether you use that or not but I think it's the way you're raised and your views on life that separate people from actually going down the rabbit hole or even listening or educating themselves or even investing you know that you know separates us people so it's just the views that separate us so yeah it's very difficult <laughs> what did this whole thing start was it your parents that just like started the, the thinking process or like was there some event yeah so my dad i'm sure you might yeah you probably speak to my dad better but like um my dad went to a some sort of conference you know basically we we worked so hard in our lives and my I think my parents reached a point where they were like we're chasing like there was free ad there's free adults in my house at work they've worked from a very young age they had me and my brother at a very young age and they constantly worked and they hit a point in their lives they were like we're working but what like why are we not getting anything else you know so I think that's when my dad my uncle and then my mom they both dig down the rabbit hole of we need to like, we need to see what's wrong you know and I think that's when my I believe my dad went to a conference and there was these two guys and this was like at the end of 2017 after all the hype and everything that just happened and yeah so in 2017 they went to a conference somewhere in England I'm not sure where and my dad met this with his friend at the time so my friend and my uncle sorry <laughs> but um he met these two bitcoiners and then something they said, I don't know what exactly they told my dad, but something stuck in his head. And from that point onwards, he knew he had to check out what Bitcoin was. And obviously, once you, if you have an open minded and you knew that, you know, everything you're doing is not going to get you anywhere differently in life, there has to be a different solution. And that's why he started to explore Bitcoin. And 
thank goodness for that <laughs> you know because I wouldn't be in the situation I am now if it wasn't for him actually you know learning about Bitcoin even for my uncle and for my mom if they didn't learn about Bitcoin they wouldn't have a massive influence on me and then at the age yeah so they started learning and then my brother got into Bitcoin and I was very immature still, like I was still in my school, didn't really care, very immature. I didn't even think about Bitcoin. We just spoke about it a lot in my house. And then because my brother started investing into Bitcoin and I could see from a side point of views that my, my dad and my brother had a topic about Bitcoin. And I was like, oh my God, why is no one speaking to me about this? You know, I want to talk about Bitcoin. You know, I have no topic with anyone now because that's all we ever spoke about. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I need to do something. And then and that's when I started to learn about Bitcoin. And that obviously really brought me close with my family and they had a massive impact. And then that's like, we started listening to a lot of podcasts. We started reading a lot of books. We spoke about it nearly every single day. I used to have a dog at the time and we used to go on walks and we used to just speak about Bitcoin financial system. And, and that's when it started getting really difficult for me as well at that time, because I reached a, a point where I was like, okay, like, this is cool. Like, I'm speaking to my family. I'm now investing into Bitcoin. Like, I see the bigger picture and I see, like, I'm not the crazy one, you know, I'm doing the right thing and this feels like the right thing. And honestly, from 2009 to now, it showed us that this is the right thing. And, you know, it's the best performing asset for no reason, you know, it ha there's a reason to it, you know. So I knew I was doing the right thing, but that's when the point that I've reached and I was like oh my god but I have no one else to talk to about you know Bitcoin like you kind of reach a standpoint and there's only so much you can learn within your household you know that's why it's good getting other people's perspective so that's when me and my dad started going to different conferences like the Madeira the Prague one and we met a lot of cool people and we started like and then you realize when you go to the conferences you're like oh my god I'm not the crazy one you know everyone it kind of thinks on the same level as you whereas you know on their day-to-day -day life nobody really cares and they're so they're so stuck in the rat race they're constantly chasing something that is nothing really so yeah that that's so that's so true i i love that a lot and you also told me you you made uh oh no you didn't told me but i saw your video where you uh, yeah. you put published on, on 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 uh youtube where you made a list what you like about bitcoin and it was a really yeah. long list. do you have the <laughs> list uh, actually with you uh it's upstairs somewhere do you want me to grab it oh i think it would be great yeah yeah okay give me like one minute i made a list when i started learning about bitcoin and i was like why is bitcoin good and i had to because i forget a lot you know and like deep down i know why bitcoin's good but you know my memory is terrible and i always forget so i was like my goal is to make a list of all the reasons why i think and other people think bitcoin is so great and this came from like learning from podcasts and then reading books. And then I just came to my conclusion why Bitcoin's the best. <laughs> Should I name them? Um, maybe it gives us some of your uh, favorite ones. I don't I know. How long is that, that list? It's like, <laughs> there's a lot. Can you see? Oh yeah, that's and then a I've lot. Got another page, yeah. They're like bullet points, yeah. so I'm yeah, not going to read all of it. I'll read some of it. Yeah, name us some of some of your favorites. Okay, so obviously decentralized. <laughs> that's the best thing, and also like the scarcity of Bitcoin is 21 million. I think that's why Bitcoin's so great because if you look at a current fiat system. Oh my God, it's literally controlled by the government. And that's why it's so corrupt because they can do whatever they like with it. And we're the, they're like dangling a bit of string and we're chasing after their dream and their, like their power, if that makes sense. So the fact that Bitcoin is decentralized and no one has the authority or power over it, apart from, you know, me, myself and everyone else who's in Bitcoin is beautiful. You know, I think that's the most important part of Bitcoin. Um, so that's definitely one that like, stands out the most that's why it's number one <laughs> decentralized um got i think transportable as well i know that sounds funny but like i always compare this to gold because i was like if i invest in gold that's not transportable what if there's a war in my country the same day and i need to move somewhere and i need to take all my life savings and start a new life somewhere gold isn't going to give me that you know and the so much chaos around gold as well 
of I don't know even if you did put it into like an account where someone keeps the gold for you the whole process of that is so complicated and I don't want someone else to be in charge of my assets I want to be the one who's in charge so that's why I put portable because I think it's so important where I can grab my keys grab my wallet and I can leave the next day I can leave this building this house that I'm in right now and I can just go and live somewhere else with you know no one controlling me and I think that's pretty important and there's a girl actually I can't remember her name she is it North Korea that's bad or South Korea and uh, north think, north yeah north korea she's in bitcoin is i don't know I, I saw some of her videos where people have invited her i think joe rogan actually had her on his podcast but the situation was really bad in obviously north korea and the one thing that saved her was bitcoin so and i just think wow and that relates to portability as well because she literally memorized her keys and all her life savings and her family you know they worked so hard towards and she left the next day well not the next day it's not that easy but you know what i mean like she left and she started her life elsewhere but her savings were in these keys that she memorized so i think that's why portability is so important yeah, that's a point that a lot of people overlook. I think uh, I got I get asked sometimes on other podcasts when I'm the guest, like, what's the most underrated feature of Bitcoin? It's the portability. That's yeah. the uh, everyone talks about the monetary policy, how it goes up, how it it, it saves your financial <laughs> energy, and that's great. Like, that's a huge uh, of huge course, feature. Yeah. But the one that's overlooked is a lot. Like, you can remember literally 12 words make a rhyme with it like make some 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 text yeah, or something with it exactly so you can remember it nicely and just go over the border like nobody knows what you're doing with that like nobody can scan your uh brain at least not now uh if you have the if you have keys in them or not like you can literally take uh, a few hundred euros in there you can take billion euros in there like exactly. it, it doesn't matter like that's a completely underrated feature of of bitcoin i feel like and I just think also the process of sending huge sums of money, like through a bank, it takes ages. Through gold, it takes even longer, you know. And with Bitcoin, you don't have that problem. So imagine if now you're going to flee the country because something bad is happening to you, you know. Your outcome, you would be devastated as a person. That's when I say, like, my views on Bitcoin are so basic. Like, as long as they meet my standards and they, Bitcoin makes me feel safe and it gives me a hope for a better future, that's the most important thing. And that's what portability does with Bitcoin, you know. You have these worries, but with Bitcoin, you don't have those worries because you know if something bad happened, you just leave the next day, you know. So I think it's really important. Like you said, it's very underrated. <laughs> Yeah, I read some other ones. This is beautiful as well. I put, I'll read it out actually. I put, a jurisdiction can be made to shut down facilities. This will have zero effect on Bitcoin. Not like the Four Seasons hotels, for example, get shut down. They go out of business completely. With Bitcoin, you don't have that impact. You know, if Bitcoins get shut down, I think that's one of the, every time I speak to like a normal person, they're like, oh, but it's a scam. What if it gets shut down? What if government takes it, you know? It doesn't work like that in Bitcoin. Even if the whole internet in the world shut down and someone was going to power up the next day, Bitcoin is still there. You know, your energy is still preserved and it's still there. And that's one miscommunication that people have about Bitcoin because it's not going anywhere. It's only growing stronger. <laughs> you know, Bitcoin's not going anywhere. So it's really important. And yeah, that's a really cool feature, I think. The fact that you can't shut it down and it's not like a hotel or like a house that can get bombed or whatever, you know. It's not like a property. Gold can be mined more of. Silver doesn't have the best values as gold. You know, there's so many different assets that I can compare this to. But yeah, Bitcoin really is superior. <laughs> Did you ever yeah. consider other assets for yourself? Uh, yeah, I did think about other assets like gold I thought about. But, I, you know, doing this list, I came to the conclusion like actually like even just portability like we mentioned earlier i couldn't have that with gold silver was out of the picture because gold was better than silver just because of its actual like core properties 
a house there's no way in chance that I'm ever going to buy a house in this situation I'm not rich that I'm not going to get a mortgage I'm, I don't want to like risk my freedom for a mortgage that I have to pay off for the whole rest of my life till like I'm 80 you know there's no chance so I just put all my cards on the table I just looked at the bigger picture and I was like what is actually which one's going to give me the best outcome for my future, the one that I want. And I think Bitcoin gave me that. So yeah, I just compared every single asset and just came to the conclusion. But also, I compared like my financial situation as well. Then also, like I compared the fact that Bitcoin is technically new, like it was only created in 2009. And chances like Bitcoin, honestly, come once in a lifetime, like there's going to be a moment of time where who's going to have Bitcoin, you know, if you're not accumulating now, who's going to have it in the future? I know it's a financial system, but like, like the same as Warren Buffett, like he bought stocks of like earlier in his years, and now they've accumulated so much that he's living his dream life. And I think it's the same with Bitcoin is like, if you don't jump on this wagon, <laughs> it's going to go, you know, sooner or later. So yeah. That's, yeah, really important. You have to take risks. You know, life is about risk, but you got to take the right risk. And that's why you got to lay your cards out on the table, look at it plain and simple and decide what the best thing for you is. Because, you know, for me, it was Bitcoin. I just compared like each point and I decided it was Bitcoin. But for someone else, maybe it is gold or maybe it is to buy a house, you know. But I, I look in terms of investing for my future and preserving my energy. I don't look like, I don't look at it as like, a form of liability because a lot of people buy houses just so they can like you know live in their house you know have their family and stuff but like it's not a form of investment to like grow your wealth if that makes sense so yeah <laughs> it's not a good investment <laughs> absolutely it's um i think every anyone that looks at if if you want to preserve your value for the future um you have to look at bitcoin like i i, I don't know how anyone can invest in anything else it, it's it's a no, really hard <laughs> argument for me like if if you have okay let's say you have like uh two thousand bitcoin in in your wallet okay maybe you can invest in the house maybe maybe you can buy yeah. something else like it doesn't matter for you because you're so damn rich already so that, that yeah. that's another situation but if you're an average show like there's no other asset for you than bitcoin exactly and like that's the that, that's the whole magic to it do you see bitcoin i mean <laughs> as a 21 year old uh, maybe you didn't think about that uh till now but do, do you think as bitcoin already as your retirement plan or, or what you like okay that i, I want to save at least like 10 percent of each month like already towards my retirement yeah i read um richest men in babylon i don't know if you've ever heard, ever heard of the book yeah oh no i heard about yeah. it never uh, never read it i think i should yeah. read it no, but one of the points in that book was save 10% of your earnings. And from that point, every paycheck, everything that I get, I put 10%. Look, look, it's like you said, you know, you look at the bigger picture. Okay, Bitcoin works best for me. Simple. Like, whether it makes sense to anyone else, I don't care. It works for me. It's my future. It's my life. I don't see any other way apart from Bitcoin. But it's saving the 10% is so important. You know, no matter what paycheck, what money you get, that 10% is going to be your retirement. So from the beginning, I've always looked at Bitcoin as a source of retirement. Number one for, yeah, for age, like for the, when I imagine I 30, 40, 50, whatever age I want to retire at, Bitcoin is going to be my retirement, but also like saving my energy, you know, so saving my energy, putting like Bitcoin as a form of retirement was really important to me. So important, like there's no other way to it. Like why else save your energy? It's like people, you know, people save in a bank. Like why are you saving that money in a bank for what? Because you want to have that as a retirement or you want to buy that house or you want to have the future that you want to have, you know, and Bitcoin's that for me, you know, so yeah. Should, should, should I read it? Is it is it a good read, Babylon? Uh, what, what what is it about? Um, so it's more like a story. I haven't read it in ages, actually. I need to reread it because you know they say always to reread a book twice. <laughs> it's so important. Um, I read it when I was quite young. So the points that I got from it's more like a story of a guy, and um, 
obviously the times in Babylon is explaining that, but it's the values that he put into the book, like they're saving the 10%. That's the only thing that I like got out of it the most, because once you pick up a point from a book, you're like, oh, nothing else really makes sense. That's why it's so important to read a book twice, <laughs> you know? So that's the most important that I bit that I got out the book. And I don't remember if it was The Richest Man in Babylon or another book, but I might be wrong on this, so don't take my word for it. But I think in the book it explained how you have coins. So in back in the days, I think it was in the Roman times, actually. No, this is, was in the book from Babylon. I don't think so. Anyway, I'll explain anyway. But back in the Roman times, they had coins, right, which they had gold in them. Well, over time, when, you know, the power and the greed was there, the actual gold coin was chipped away. So the gold within itself got chipped away. So therefore the gold, like the coin's value got lost over time. I don't know, remember, I, I just can't remember if that was the book or a different book that I read because I've read so many different books. Like it just gets put into one pot altogether. But yeah, the main thing I got out of the book was the 10%. And I think that's for anyone, you know, whether you're investing in Bitcoin or not, always save your 10% because that's for your retirement. So yeah, I think read it. I'm going to read it again too. <laughs> <laughs> really really cool yeah, yeah I, I i also actually have the strategy with books because if i read a book it's really hard to remember everything so yeah. i always try to like get one key takeaway like yeah. if i read a book right now i want to take i, I want to get one key takeaway from that and then many stories and arguments and signals around that one key takeaway to really hammer it down so like whatever um, whatever it is, for example, I, because a guest recommended to, to me, um, buy back your di time was the last one I finished. Uh, and okay. it's really amazing how you can I actually, I haven't read that one. I need to, it, yeah. it's, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a really good read. If you want to get started with entrepreneurship, or if you even have already some entrepreneurship, it's also oh, okay. good if you are not an entrepreneur, but it's, uh, it's kind of skewed towards entrepreneurship so like if you have a small business or like you're starting to make you have like one two employees already then it's really yeah. good um, okay, because a lot cool. of small business entrepreneurs they, they tend to burn out and there yeah. are reasons for that and and it's a really amazing book to to like yeah as as the title already says buy back your time uh, exactly. like not not hiring to to grow the business but hiring to actually buy back your time so you can actually uh, grow the business there was some really interesting takeaways in there for me uh that i have now in in my plan of of maybe making this podcast a little bit more of a business and not just a one man show <laughs> that's good that's really good and like stuff like that are so important that's why it's really cool like having a podcast in the first place because people's knowledge and views get put on you as well which is really good and especially the people that are in the bitcoin industry because you know like i've never really seen anything like it you know the one that everyone thinks are like but two like everybody has their own unique experiences and stuff that they've gained knowledge on which they can give you you know which is really cool oh sorry because you can learn from you know other people actually i was going to ask you have you read the bitcoin standard i'm sure you have uh yes it was my how first did you book. find that book oh okay first book how did you find it was it difficult for you at the beginning uh, I read it really late. Like I read it when I already had most of my money in Bitcoin because yeah. I'm not a okay, big cool. <laughs> book guy, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a really, re really big on, on podcasting. Uh, like uh, always, like I learned a lot with podcasts and, and then yeah. I recently got into audiobooks. So now I'm way more and more of an, a book guy. Uh, yeah. But uh, I already read it when I had like, I don't know, 30 interviews uh of cypherdine already in me <laughs> so i already was was just yeah. like the, the book didn't gave me a lot more than all the podcast interviews that cypherdine yeah. did uh because i really like i i watched uh in 2020 and 2021 i probably watched every michael sailor cypherdine moose uh and a lot more other people's interviews and podcasts uh, and yeah. small pieces and presentations online uh, and that's how i really sucked all the information in me and then in like the last two years i uh try to uh read all some books and really go a little bit deeper and manifest all the things uh, so i wasn't quite ready for it but i do think it's not uh, the best book to recommend someone for the first time there, I, f I feel like 
um, it, it can be too shocking and too, too much for someone uh, if they really want to get into. Yeah, I agree. Because I had, um, like, I've never been very educational, <laughs> like literature. I don't know how else to put that. You know, like, there's so much, like, you learn but I learn more by doing or like constantly hearing the same thing. You know, it's like the same with books. Like you only really pick up one thing. Well, I, at least I do. So when I read that book, I was like, damn, I need to reread this like three more times because it's so, there's so much information. And like at the beginning, when someone always tells me what like book do you recommend? A lot of people say Bitcoin standard book, but for me, definitely not. Like you need to People that have no financial literature, like they need to start off like small to then grow to bigger. So yeah, I love I love that book. Don't get me wrong, especially like the economics, and then he released the fiat one as well. And now there's a food one as well. Really good stuff. But like it's very hard at the beginning, and that's why I thought I'd ask you because I found it very hard anyway. So yeah, there's other better books, and as you said, audio books as well. So yeah, um, it's it's interesting because. I think Saifedin's book is a must read, but not the first one, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, he did. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, please go ahead. No, I saw that. So he tweeted something or I, I either tweeted or like I heard something. He said that he prefers his second book, which is the fear standard right is that the second one yeah yes. the second one so yeah that just shows but like i think it's a good one just because you know if you're gonna learn i think the number one question when it comes to learn about financial literature is what is money you know and in that book it gives a beautiful example of how it was created and then each point as well i just think it's very hard to grasp in the beginning just because you know you have so many questions and you know it's really hard so but yeah definitely his book is definitely one to recommend you know he's very intelligent so it's really good absolutely and we are already uh, at the end routine uh with you today um the end routine uh, consists of two questions the first is always the same for every guest and the question is what can we learn from you besides bitcoin what can you learn from me <laughs> that's a hard one um i think number one is putting bitcoin aside try everything in life go out your comfort zone and learn everything in life that you can because otherwise you're going to always have that what if in life and you don't want that as a person you got to keep developing because development leads to other things in life and who knows that just might be something special at the end of the tunnel so yeah go out your comfort zone and always learn new things that's number one definitely i thought you will say how to drive a lorry <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Everybody drive a lorry, try it. <laughs> then we'll have less idiots on the road. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Really, really cool. The The last end routine is where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, yeah. And the question is really cool for you. If you have awakened on any subject areas outside of Bitcoin in the past five years, what were those subjects? Food. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird, but like once you start learning about Bitcoin, you start learning about other different values like politics, governments, financial. But then in our family it also led us to food, the topic of food. And actually you have to num the number one rule in life. If you're ever going to dream of anything is to always be healthy. Unfortunately, in 2020, I got diagnosed with an illness. And at that time, we were still learning about Bitcoin as well. And I think that really opened the minds in everyone in my household so from that point our lifestyle and the food we eat and the food we put into us is so important and if you ask any bitcoiner as well actually a lot of people like steak and steak is so good for you you know like the properties it have so i think one thing i've learned from the bitcoin journey outside of bitcoin itself is really take care of yourself and look at the food you eat because a lot of it is processed nowadays because unfortunately our system is so corrupt so yeah the food you eat is the most important because that's what gives you fuel and that's what gives you the ability to learn about bitcoin <laughs> so yeah Thank you so much, Amelia, for, for being on. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you and ask your questions? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter, Amelia Urbanska, a bit of a weird surname, X at the end. Um, I will send it to you after. And then also, maybe in the future, I'll be starting my own podcast as well, because that's why I really look up to you, because 
you know, you gain so much knowledge with so many different people. And I'd love to do the same thing just because I'm 21 years old. And there's so much that I haven't learned yet. And the best way is actually talking to people, reaching out to people. So yeah, you can find me Amelia Abanska. Let's talk Bitcoin on YouTube as well. So they're the two places. So yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for having me on your podcast. It's been an amazing experience. And I wish I wasn't as nervous at the beginning. <laughs> it's been really good. Thank Thank you uh, so much. It, it was wonderful. I, I loved our talk. Thank you so much for, for being on. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening uh, and joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.